Alright guys, another day, another game, well actually for me, it's the third game in a row for this account. We're playing Cyberbra from No Country, Known. And we won. It's as easy as pie, guys. <laughs> this must be the, <laughs> the easiest game ever. I think he wanted to um, abort the game, but right at that moment, Wow, I uh, made a move, I guess, and, and then his impatience got the better of him. Okay, let's play a new game. Uh, this one doesn't count, right? Wow. <laughs> An Andrew Nader, 12. And let's actually play something I actually do play, which is um, the Ponziani opening, where we'll strike with d4. Okay, this is, not, this is already out of theory, and we have a center now. Okay, this... This doesn't make sense. Okay, we're out of theory. Okay, so what happens? We have the center. He moved the same piece twice in the opening. We have a center. We have one piece up. He has a one piece developed. He bets everything is kind of awkward. How does he develop the bishop? Now you are literally in your own way. So I'm thinking we're gonna attack him as actively as possible. What's the most active move you can play? Maybe bishop c4. And here, takes, takes, never mind, this is not good. But maybe knight c3 then first, because then we control the square a little bit better. So let's just, it's simple chess today. Okay. So you play c6, maybe he wants to play b5, maybe he wants to play d5. Reasonable. Let's see. If he plays d5, we want to play e4 e5 getting more space more squares to really uh, show our prowess if you play bishop c4 here you can just goes here takes 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 and we're down a piece as uh yeah i just calculated that so i think the bishop is here very nicely placed and if you play d5 we play e5 and then the bishop is open so that makes sense knight here Okay, I see a piece on the g6 square, which makes me want to play h4, h5, and then he has to go again. So he moved from here to here to here, and he stops that move, which is the first good move he made. And no backfiring on my opponent, I might lose this game, but I'm definitely a bit better here. It's just a matter of um, being patient. You know, this is kind of weak. He has not yet developed. He wants to play d4, but he can't. I want to play bishop g5, but then bishop e7. And yeah, we have to find a way to make uh, things work here. So even though we play h4, our opponent is also weak, so I'm thinking about playing g3. Also, he wants to put his bishop here, because it's a very nice outpost here at the moment. So, looking at our opponent's plans, it's not doing bad so bad. It's not doing so bad. So maybe knight here, preventing him from going here to play f3, maybe. You can also just play solid, but I don't like solid. Yeah, this is, these types of positions are worse. Okay, if we go here, we do leave this behind, but it's not attacked. Knight f6. He's violating principles, we do the same. We move a piece twice in the opening. Now, he's turning into take here. Takes and take here. That's nice, that's nice. So, I'm thinking, let's just play this. If he takes, we take back at the bottom. And if he took here, and we, we would have t had to take back with the rook, we could have taken here, and after he takes here, he would be up a pawn, I think. But he might have not seen it and just played it uh, without much thinking. 
bishop g4, steal natural move, and then I play f3. If he plays f6, it's fine by me. You just move back somewhere, maybe to h3, maybe to, so we can go to f5. If you go here, same problem, don't like it. And our opponent finally taking a tank after blitzing out 10 moves. And believe me or not, he's, he's playing f6. So let's go here, put a knight there, maybe at some point. And our opponent is just in a mood or something. We could go here. But it's 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 a bit the dubious because you just but the but the, 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 the oh. what? So he has moved the knight here, which makes this pawn interfered with. You're literally in your own way, and I'm gonna make use of that by taking. And I calculate nothing, but I kind of sense that I can play e5 after this. So let's say here. Oh wait, he can just move away, but then I take. If here, he cannot move away, but he comes here, we can play e5. And if he plays f4, we take. And if he takes, I'm doomed because the knight is still there. Okay, but we're still gonna take the pawn, right? And king f7, best move. If he doesn't play king f7, we get this. f4. No, never mind. Maybe here. But the pawn is a pawn. So my intuition was that wrong. That wrong. Because of f4. Uh, f5. Shit. Oops. Cannot swear on YouTube. Yeah, you, king f3 played. Here, F4, don't know what to do. But we also have just this. Very simple chess, very simple. There's a pin. We cannot use this because he has this. But he cannot do anything about the knight, can he? Let's go here. And he cannot take, as then I would schnetz up the king, so it's not allowed. And again, Opponent just sitting in his own way. This is probably resignable, but at our level, we still kind of blunder this sometimes, you know. Even me, the best player in the world, in terms of blundering pieces, does also give away this. <laughs> oh, this is so sad. So yeah, and I think it's, notice how I was already thinking about what to play next in this move, and I figured that this doesn't work, and because I was already like sort of plotting and thinking and asking myself questions on, oh, how do I make use of this? Like, I was already doing this before I was in this position, and this gives me the time to actually come up with the right move, because I was already thinking about it before the position was there and the more you think about it the better you move so yeah and it was not that I was a better player here he was just making like suboptimal moves and I was really just asking myself uh, some questions so yeah that's that now we could take with the knight we could take with the queen look we, we haven't even thought about this move taking with the knight comes with check Taking with the queen. Um, yeah, uh, I think the best way, again, psychology. You have a great move, everything is winning, and your opponent is so annoyed that you're not just blitzing out your moves. And he's in total agony in bad positions because people take chess way too seriously. And because of that, they resign, <laughs> while well, you still have to convert. So, 
yeah, that's just something to keep in mind. Uh, it's something I just, uh, yeah, sometimes it happens. So let's go through the game. Won't be too long today. Two games, one in a row. Rating has skyrocketed to. 1538, 32, sorry. Um, yeah, I don't care about the rating, honestly. This is exactly what I mean. I, I didn't play great chess in my last two games. One was just aborted, but then resigned. And the other was just stupid because our opponent was playing stupid. e4, e5, knight f6, knight f3, and I want to play a Ponziani. And the Ponziani I know goes knight f6, and if you, then you go d4, which was the whole point of c3 play d4 and if they then take here you push this pawn and if they take this one you push this one and I will explain in now why if you go here and your opponent plays any move except this one he's already in trouble because here you have queen e2 and he can try to play d5 here but then en passant you can still not move the knight and if he here takes we have a knight now for this move we just take and after any move you have h6 bishop uh, knight back and his pawn structure is ruined and you have a long-term advantage which you can make use of also you have the center d5 if he goes here that's the only best move that's the best move that's the only move actually uh, you can just take you can also play queen b3 whatever suits you you're just playing chess after this knight b6 takes Let's play d6, uh, bishop e5, bishop d2, knight c3. You're just developing, you're just playing chess, I guess, at, the at this point. Uh, so that's all I know. And if they take the other pawn, so not this one, but this one. You push this pawn, and here is where the beauty lies. Knight goes back. You take the other uh, pawn, so you trade the pawns, and the most natural move. What's the most natural move? You want to get rid of this pawn, right? I mean, because you want to get rid of this knight. Boom, you're already winning. Bishop b5. You can also play queen a5 and then, you know, pick up this thing. But bishop b5. And after he blocks with the bishop, we have bishop takes d7. And the king is stuck and he has to sacrifice the queen. So, then you might be thinking, why don't you just play c3? It doesn't matter. Take. And now, after takes, I think, knight takes, thank you engine, and knight takes, takes, bishop d7, we take the knight. Because otherwise we just exchange. And we have a free piece. There's one line you have to be aware of. Which is after c6 takes queen b6. Don't just. Well, you no, do this. <laughs> but don't. Whoa, wait, wait, wait. Wait, 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 wait. I don't. c6 takes. Takes. Knight takes. And now queen b6, sorry. Now you gotta be careful because he's turning the mates. So then you play knight e4 check, and after bishop blocks, you take, and the king has to take. And you play this position, you're up a pawn, but the, the king's safety here is up in shambles. He has to play with a king here. You have a lot of resources here. You could, you already have something like this. No, you don't, do you? F4. You know, you don't have it now, because if you take now, he is mate. Or something like mate. It's not good. So you castle first, and maybe then, because this is not protected, if he makes a move, then you go for queen g4. That makes a lot more sense. And after f5, you take. And shit should be good. Alright, so not played, but it is a nice introduction to the Ponziani opening. Uh, our opponent plays d6, and now we are sort of transposing to a sort of Philidor. Philidor being uh, knight of 3, d6, d4. Um, 
and if 96 here takes takes we have the same line right this is the same and then the game continues uh, 93 yeah bishop d2 d3 not sure if that was the best one what does engine say engine already gives us a big advantage because of this maneuver he made twice bishop d3 actually being the best move that's very nice and h4 just really going for it h5 fair point h4 is actually not the best move interesting probably h3 then yeah h3 to prevent bishop here all right but knight f6 and how do we continue bishop e3 bishop e6 e7 sorry and probably just castles castles knight d2 best move what castles and after f4 that's the whole point of putting the knight back okay let's say we play d5 striking in the center we probably e5 yes but it's a small advantage it's very strategical not something i like to play but i will keep it in mind next time very a lot of space though to work with it's very scary for black 95 i wonder if it's the right move the right move is e5 why look at the space development look at ours it's probably best and if he takes I think we can even take the bishop here first, yes. And now we take with the knight. Yes, this has this made a lot of more sense than what I did. E5, great move. So this was played and this was essentially the mistake. Bishop h6, you could take here and then go here. And this is just that as winning. I think taking with the knight was best. Yes, engine agrees with me. Yes, uh, yeah. And then, I don't know. Probably just taking the rook. And then, probably just taking the knight. And then, probably just taking the. Okay, I'm stopping. Thank you guys for watching. See you guys next time.